Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to the show today. Dr. Dan Thompson here. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Today, Dr. AJ Tarpoff's going to be here and we're going to talk about lice control in cattle, whether it's the cows or feeders. When we get to winter, we need to understand that it is time for us to make sure that we control lice in these herds. We don't want to have animals itching, we don't want to have the losses in production, and we don't want to have our fences torn down, so stay tuned. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash join to learn more. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one-two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm here at Kansas State University and we have Dr. A.J. Tarpoff here on the show. Um, thanks for being here. Yeah, always a pleasure to be here, Dan. It's great to have you here. We have some tremendous faculty at Kansas State's uh, Animal Science and Industry uh, Department. Now, is it Animal Sciences and Industry or Animal Science and Industries? Animal Sciences and Industry. All right, I, would, I just cut them both off singular to, and I, I was gonna say it wrong one way or the other, but <laughs> we got it. But y'all need to come to Kansas State and take a look and, and visit with the faculty and, and the students. We have a new department head and a lot of energy within the department. It's a lot of fun. Um, we're going to talk about something that's kind of itchy. <laughs> uh, very itchy. We're a little bit of lice. Lice. Yeah, so kind of start me off on, on how you would, you know, when, when just describe to me the types of lice and, and mm -hmm. uh, what we're dealing with. Okay, so in the big scheme of things, we have two different types of lice that mm -hmm. affect our cattle. And I want to make th one thing pretty clear is lice, they are species specific. So if your cattle have lice, don't worry about your kids having lice going to school, okay? Uh, so they are very species specific. If, if your cattle have lice, it doesn't mean your horses are gonna be affected or anything like that. So there are very specific cattle louse that affect our animals. Uh, within the cattle lice species, we have two different types. We have a couple of species, about four species of sucking lice, and then we have one biting louse. Okay, and the difference between the two is one is actually their blood feeders. So their head part, their head mouth, pierces through the hide and they drink blood from our cows. Uh, the other one, they're biting lice and they feed on the surface, on the dead skin cells and things of that nature, but they feed on the surface of animals and they never actually puncture through huh. the hide. I'll be dang, so yeah, 
you know, the, the, it's more like a tick then, or how long, I mean, do they lock on forever? Or do they take a meal and move or? No, so their uh, lice spend their entire life cycle on animals. They have to be on cattle. Uh, they kind of go into a dormant state during the summer months, but they really thrive during the winter time. Uh, and so, of course, that's where we see most of our lice issues is during the winter months. Okay, so basically from December through February, March, of course, during calving season, that's where we see the vast majority of our lice issues, our infestations, and we see clinical effects of our lice. Yeah, same way with feedlots too, you know, we'll see mm -hmm. them, uh, we start pouring in the, in the fall and the, the spring, but we, really it's a, it's a, it's a wintertime phenomenon, which a lot of people don't understand. No, uh, so we have a wintertime issue, okay, animals that are already stressed, succumb more to some of these lice issues. Uh, we can have anemia, we can have blood loss from those sucking lice. Uh, we can see it, uh, decreases in average da daily gain, okay? Huh. Two t up to two tenths of a pound in a growing animal uh, per day, we can have loss just from lice, uh, lice issues. Uh, so there's, a, there's an enormous amount of loss that that's can happen. A, that's, a, that's a race of a implant response. It is. Yeah. It is. And the, the biggest thing to think about is due to these losses, just due to the parasite itself, our industry loses uh, roughly $125 million a year just due to lice. Oh boy. And that doesn't have anything to do with some of the other losses that we'll talk about. Cool. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to get into lice and, and lice issues with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff here at Kansas State University. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here. Welcome to Cattle First, as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica, and the term today, biosecurity. Biosecurity is security. It's like having a bouncer that keeps pathogens out and keeps um, disease out of your herd. One of the best tools you can use for biosecurity is a proper vaccination program and work with your veterinarian on that. The second one is introduction of new animals. And when we bring new animals on the farm, making sure that if there's a disease that, that is important that we test for, that we have that done prior to bringing them on the premise. And if, it, if they haven't been, then we have a place to quarantine them until we can get the diagnostics back, I think is, is vitally important. Uh, talking to your neighbors as cattle lean across the fence and, and, and communicate with each other, making sure that you have a community-wide biosecurity plan and vaccination plan, vitally important. Keep the disease out be the bouncer. Sugarcrop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. We're over in Weber Hall in the Heritage Room where Dr. Tarpoff serves as our state beef veterinarian here in Kansas. And he's doing things not only in Kansas but beyond and, and we're very, very thankful to have him on our, our faculty. Uh, talk about the life cycle because I, I think that, that 
it's important for people to understand where they come from and, and how they how they grow. Yep. So we know that it's a winter issue, mm -hmm. right? Um, now these these animals, I, I mentioned they kind of stay dormant during the summer months, and that's true. So we have adults, uh, the adult louse, that will actually hide out in different areas around the ears, maybe around the eyes, uh, but they really don't like hot weather. Okay, so they kind of go into this dormant state. Now once the cooler weather starts, that's where they really jumpstart their reproductive cycles. Uh, now the stages, we have eggs, egg laying, and we call them nits. You know, if you ever ever seen, you know, National Geographic, you know, some of the species will pick, uh, you know, pick little nits, nit pickers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so those are eggs, and the eggs are uh, laid actually on <laughs> hair follicles themselves, and they almost use a type of glue that sticks to them. So those are the nits, those are the eggs. Uh, eggs will hatch, and they turn into a nymph which a nymph is basically just a very small adult. That's what they look like. Um, and then again, they molt into an adult. So that, those are the kind of three stages of the, the lice life cycle. And depending on the species, because we do have some different uh, type of cattle uh, lice, can, the life cycle takes from egg to egg, so to speak, can take about 28 to 30 days. Okay, so being hatched to laying eggs mm -hmm. on its own, about 28 to 30 yep. days. Yep, so three weeks to three weeks to a month. I never knew about that. That nit, if you're nitpicky, <laughs> I get it. Picking on the little nits. Yep. <laughs> well, I know some nitpickers, but anyway, <laughs> I'm not one of them. Now, when we uh, um, think about lice and and you know obviously the nits and different things, what are some of the damages that that these cause? I mean, obviously. We talked about the decrease in performance, but what are some of the clinical signs or things we can see? Okay, itchy cattle. That's kind of the number one thing that we see. But uh, from afar, what can we see? Uh, now, uh, when we get up close, we might see some hair patch loss, yep. okay? Uh, rubbed off from fences, buildings, posts, trees. Uh, so you'll be driving along out to go check your cattle and you come up to your fence and you see all these chunks of hair sticking along the fence line in the barbed wire. It's like, hmm, why are cattle rubbing up against those fences? Uh, when we see those animals, we can see patchy hair loss on the neck, on the shoulders, on the rump, and that's where they're itchy, okay? Those lice themselves actually cause irritation to the skin where the cattle get uncomfortable, they start to itch, they start to rub, and unfortunately, that's one of our biggest economic impacts, not just due to average daily gain loss and decrease in milk production, but also to the damage of our own facilities. Um, it's hard to quantify how much damage that is, but we all know how expensive it is to, to put up you know, new stretch of bar, uh, stretches of barbed wire. Uh, but our facilities are a major cost, and, and lousy cattle really cause an issue. Oh, I, you know, when, when you pull into the feed yard, and you just, if you just stop in the winter and just kind of zone out and don't focus on anything, just look across the yard, and all of a sudden you say, holy moly, everything's up against the fence rubbing. It's pretty obvious that we need to have a talk about lice. Absolutely. Yeah. Folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to start talking about, I assume we're going to start talking about how we're going to take care of this. Yeah, we, we can try to combat these problems and combat these parasites the best we can. Cool. This is the guy. Hope you all are enjoying this show. More with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff after these messages. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees or neighbors helping neighbors? Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident, give me a call, we can discuss. 316-945-6733. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. 
Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage hornfly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM-L and new AIM-A Abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Long-term medication, even though we have medications now that are exceptionally safe, especially for senior animals, they come with a cost. So you figure you're going to run about $2.25, depending on the medication that you choose to use, 2 to $3 a day. And so if you're going to spend $100 a month, but what I tell my owners is, is that once you've gone down that road of utilizing pain medication and the dog's doing great on it and they can't feel it, they can't stop, you pull them off of it, they're going to be worse. So you have to keep going. So you have to commit to yourself that, hey, I'm going to do this medication, I'm going to keep it going, and I'm never going to stop. With this, there's really no commitment. It's like, okay, we did this. If this works, great. If there's a condition that maybe it didn't work so much for, or maybe there was some compliance issue, or something happened, we're not stuck in any way, shape, or form. We can go to another modality if we feel it's appropriate. But in this instance, I think we're, we're onto something, at least with this therapy, at least from our judgment, that has done really well, because we have not yet had a dog come back. We have not repeated an injection. We have not had a complaint. And the dogs that have come back into our office, it is really hard to tell where the lameness was. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, who serves as our state beef veterinarian and uh, is doing a ton in the state, and we're very, very proud to have him here. Uh, you know, there's, there's an economics associated with everything that we do. So when, when it comes to lice, how do you kind of balance that? Okay, so uh, the general recommendation is, okay, when do they start losing when do we start losing money? When do these animals need to be treated? Obviously, by the time that we, we look at these animals and they have patchy hair loss, they're rubbing, busting down our fences, we're a little bit behind the eight ball. Uh, one way to assess uh, how many, how, what kind of infestation do we have on our cows uh, before it gets that bad is we can actually part the hair. We can run the animal into a catch, uh, catch chute, into a squeeze. We can part the hair on maybe the neck, the withers, uh, the rump and part the hair and actually we can see the little lice they're about the size of a grain of sand we can see them scurrying around and if there's roughly 10 lice per square inch they definitely need to be yeah. treated gotcha so so then once we have that now we say okay we've got a problem what what are you know I, well, let's talk about the cows first you know what what do i do okay so um, there, there's a lot of operations and that may end up using a dewormer type product in the fall during preg check, mm -hmm. uh, after summer grazing to clean up some of the internal parasites after that summer grazing. Most of those products that are used are actually an indecticide, a macrocytic lactone. Okay, yep. these would be our avermectins, uh, avermectin, uh, ivermectin, dormectin, uh, cydectin. There's a lot of those different products that are out there and available. Um, so those products kill lice. Right. Okay. Pour on formulations do work against external, uh, both the external parasites and internals. Uh, but in lice, remember we have blood sucking lice and then ones that just feed on the surface. Mm -hmm. If you use an injectable dewormer, okay, at, in, in the fall, it will not have coverage against those biting lice that only feed on the surface. Oh, so the, the injectable is just going to get the sucking lice but the porons will get both. Correct, correct. Now where we run into problems is we usually use these products early in the season, right? The, mm -hmm. That we're trying to deworm and get, get the added benefit of some of these external parasites. We do it earlier in the fall, okay? But when do we see our lice issues? Yeah, deep in the winter. N deep in the winter, okay? Now deep in the winter, we have different types of products that are locally acting, they're not systemic, Okay, but they work directly against those lice. They're very similar products to what we use against for fly control. Okay, but we can use those in the dead of the in, in the dead of winter to get some really good outcomes to really control those species when it matters most. Gotcha. So, so when we do the things in the in the fall, there's probably if you have lice or if you've had lice issues, 
um, you probably need to be working with your veterinarian and looking at, at a secondary lice treatment or some way of applying it to those cattle as you go. And have a plan in place, okay? Plan ahead, work with your veterinarian to have that discussion so you're prepared to handle some of these lice issues when they occur. Yep, and there's tons of products. Mm -hmm. Cool. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to wrap up our segment on lice with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff here at Kansas State University. The elements can be relentless. Make sure they have respiratory protection to match. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP that brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey, all right. Welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff. We're talking about lice and lice control in your cow herd. And, and so there's quite a few different products, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what you use and how you use it are important. Uh, so this is where we're using these products as an investment in our animals, mm -hmm. okay? Any type of investment, I wanna make sure it gets done right. And that goes with any type of investment. And it's no different with lice treatment, okay? I mentioned that most of our lice treatments that we use when we have an outbreak, these are topical products that only work on the surface. These are not systemic, uh, so we do have to get proper coverage on these animals. And this is where I see most of the problems uh, of, of reinfestation and things like that is uh, misapplication of some of these lice products. Right. So read your product label, but most of our product labels actually have, a, actually have the administration from the pole all the way down to the tail head. Okay, uh, and some of these pour-on type products or spot-ons are very low dose. So one thing that I, I really try to get producers to do, feedlot cowboys, uh, whoever's applying these products, uh, split your dose. If it is one of the low volume, low dosage uh, type products, they're very concentrated, uh, split that dose into two. So then you can take your dosing gun applicator and you can have one application from the pole, the back of the head, down through the withers. You can refill the barrel and then you go the rest of the way. So That's it, a great idea. It really helps spread that product over the entire animal. We get full coverage of the animal where we really get a good uh, kill on the adults, uh, the actually adult lice, and that's what those products work against. Yeah, I see, I see people that have issues in their cows, and they'll say, well, I, I put it on twice already, and it didn't, it didn't do anything. And you're like, well, yeah, but, and you go, and they just spray it between the withers, like mm -hmm. they're putting, like on dogs, you know, for the tick, flea and tick. Right. And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. You've got to mm -hmm. get good coverage across that animal's back. Just keep in mind that the majority of these products that we use are pyrethrins, the spot-ons that are very concentrated, very low dose. Uh, they're not systemic products, okay? So they don't uh, soak into the bloodstream, that they, uh, they really work on contact and they have to come in physical contact with those lice. Uh, so that's what we're after, full coverage of the animal. Uh, but also keep in mind that, uh, depending on the product that you're using, may need a retreatment in two to three weeks. 
okay? Yep. Uh, the, these topical products, these locally acting uh, that, that work by contact, they only work on the adults, okay? They don't work on those nits. Uh, be, so we wait for two to three uh, weeks for those nits to hatch into an anemone for an adult, and then we can actually uh, clean them up secondary with that with that secondary hit. Okay. And if you're going to bring another animal into your herd, we can't forget about biosecurity. If you're going to treat for lice, treat every single animal in the herd. Uh, I, I this happens every day, but we might. Oh, the bull, you know, kind of had, we were having trouble getting that bull in. So we just left him out in the pasture. He didn't get his dose. One animal can reinfest the entire herd in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, this can be a new arrival. If you just bought a group of replacement heifers or things of that nature. Uh, those, it, make sure tr you treat those. Uh, you put them under quarantine, so to speak, so they're all clear before you introduce them for, to your animals. <laughs> yeah. Great information, folks. And uh, again, very thankful for you being on the show. Always a pleasure, Dan. Thank you. And thanks for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University with Dr. A.J. Tarpoff, and we'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with AML and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas Corn Farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting, and it, it didn't get better, and so I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. I, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not going to work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and by 11.30, the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders, and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try, and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. What if sustainability were synonymous with U.S. soy? If energy efficiency, water quality, and soil health help define U.S. soy's value, that future is here, the time is now. To meet end-user demands, the Soybean Checkoff is committing to sustainability that's achievable, worthwhile, and enduring. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers.